The latest presidential survey from public policy polling finds Hillary Clinton ahead in five key battleground states following her Monday night debate with Donald Trump. Next Tuesday night, Elaine Quijano of CBS News moderates the debate between the vice presidential candidates, Republican Mike Pence and Democrat Tim Kaine. And pollsters will quickly assess that debate, too. Well, CBS News does its own polling and, of course, it has since 1975, but there's been a sharp rise in the number of polls since 2012. We wanted to know who's doing them and how they go about taking the political temperature of the country. Mark Albert found out. I'm calling on behalf of CBS News and the New York Times with a poll on current events. When a pollster wants to know what America's thinking, these are the men and women who pick up the phone and ask. Probably not vote or definitely not vote. Which one? They're the voices on the other end of the line. We have the site here. We have another site in Pennsylvania, up in Reading, Pennsylvania, and one more site in Las Vegas. Iran Ben Porath is vice president at SSRS, a national polling firm with an office in this nondescript one-story building in Allentown, Pennsylvania, where callers persuade voters to share their views on issues, events, and candidates. And then if the 2016 presidential election were being held today and the candidates were Hillary Clinton, the Democrat, Donald Trump, the Republican, Jill Stein, the Green Party candidate, and Gary Johnson, the Libertarian, who would you vote for? The latest national poll shows the race is tied at 46 percent. No one knows who will win, and suspense sells. How's business this year for you? Election season is a, is a good <laughs> season for this industry. Obviously, there's a lot of interest in, in polling. And, no and downtime. No downtime. This place is, is fully booked. The results of this CBS News poll, which ran five days and randomly called 13,000 people to get 1,700 willing to answer questions, made headlines the following week. It shows Hillary Clinton leading Donald Trump 41 to 39. 45 percent of Trump voters say they are very enthusiastic about voting. Sarah okay. Dutton helped craft the more than 60 questions and, uh, for that poll as director of surveys now. at CBS News. When making a poll accurate, do you look at who you call? That's certainly important, yes. The order of the questions. Absolutely. The wording of the questions. Yes. Whose name comes first, Clinton Trump? Trump Clinton. Half the time it will be Clinton Trump and half the time it will be Trump Clinton. It's endlessly interesting to me to understand public opinion in this country and I think frankly we contribute to a conversation about our country's social and cultural history. Um, we provide an insight into how Americans are feeling about things that are happening around them and I think that can play a useful role in, in understanding America. It sounds like you consider yourself not just a pollster but perhaps a storyteller. Absolutely. New polling from Quinnipiac University. And there are more players than ever taking the field. There's a brand new poll that has just come out. It's from Bloomberg. It actually shows that Trump is up in a four-way race. Are there too many polls this year? No, I don't think you can have too many high-quality public opinion polls. Courtney Kennedy is the director of survey research at the Pew Research Center. Polling serves uh, at least two really important functions. One, it's, it's a check on uh, elected officials, so it prevents them from just asserting what public opinion is. Polls are designed to give each citizen an equal voice, and it's one of the only tools that we have to do that. Today, pollsters' work is used by a growing number of election forecasters, many of whom aggregate polls and use other data to boldly predict each day who's going to win. But like all predictions, they can change. Take Nate Silver's 538 election forecast. On August 14th, they gave Clinton an 89% chance of becoming the 45th president. Six weeks later, though, her chances had dropped to 54%. Over the same time period, the New York Times upshot had Clinton's chances slide from 87 percent to 69 percent. The large majority of voters at this point you know, probably are pretty much locked in. When it comes to election forecasting, though, few have predicted the way the winds would blow on Election Day better than Alan Abramowitz. He's a political science professor at Emory University in Atlanta. His model, called Time for a Change, has correctly predicted every winner of the popular vote since 1988. He's 7-0. This is a prediction that's made several months before the election, so I'm not using any of the horse race polling that comes after that. Abramowitz's model factors in only three things, presidential approval rating, GDP economic growth, and how long the incumbent's party has been in power. One can accurately predict the outcome without 
taking into account the candidates or the campaigns. This year's Time for a Change predicts exactly that, a win for outsider Donald Trump. The online polls seem to have us winning. But Abramowitz actually thinks this is the year his streak finally ends. This is not an election like a normal election where we have offsetting candidates and campaigns. So I would expect in the end that Donald Trump is going to underperform. But for traditional pollsters, it's not about picking the winner. In our poll, we ask if the election were being held today. It's a snapshot. It's a snapshot. It's not a prediction. It is a snapshot in time at this moment in time where the race stands. But if you don't trust the predictions or the polls, you could always try following the bulls and the bears. Since World War II, the performance of the S&P 500 in August, September, and October of a presidential election year has correctly predicted the winner by party 15 out of 18 times. And with the closing bell on a wild campaign season just five weeks away, these pollsters know your there's opinion. a lot on the line. Your answers and your opinions are very important to us. For CBS This Morning Saturday, Mark Albert, Allentown, Pennsylvania. Wow. And, yeah, I know a lot of people are very suspicious of polls, but I mean, as, as, as his piece points out, I mean, there, many of these polls are very carefully crafted. I mean, scientifically crafted and, and, and amazingly accurate. And even though scientific crafts, <laughs> it's, it's like you still don't know which way. Well, the wind's going to blow. When it's a race this tight, you know, it they is. swing really quickly. This one is so different. Yeah. This one is so different. We'll, just, we'll see how different soon. Okay, we will.